Hello everybody, welcome to this video. So glad to see you. Thanks for taking the time to spend some time with me. Today I'm going to talk to you about whoa, something that's been like in the making for a year. So those of you who have been following for at least a year or two may remember at some point I had talked about creating a handmade capsule wardrobe and I was so excited about it and I was like, like you know, yay, like we're going to do this, it's going to be something that's really suited to my lifestyle and super functional and I plan on the fabrics and the colors and they asked you suggestions um, between different patterns and you all participated. It was really fun. I really enjoyed that video. But then it came to the making <laughs> and I realized I never updated you on the result of that. Now, something I learned about myself is I'm definitely more of a planner and starter versus a finisher. That may be a conversation for another video. However, um, I get all excited with making plans and then I think between just the amount of time it takes to, you know, sew, like sewing does take a lot of time, especially if you're not a super pro person. I would consider myself maybe more of a, I don't know, somewhere like between intermediate, like just shy of being an intermediate, I would say like a, like a well experienced beginner. No, I can't really say beginner anymore. The reason I can't call myself an intermediate, I don't feel good with that title, is because I don't do zippers. I don't do with zippers. I really don't do buttons. I don't do well with like knits and slinky fabrics. So in a way, I feel like I'm not quite an intermediate yet. However, I've been sewing for a number of years. I sew for fun. And um, yeah, I made a lot of things I had talked about in that intro video. So if you haven't seen it yet, or you're here, just kind of new-ish, Go watch that. I'll link it up in the iCards. I'll link it down below in the info bar because that'll give you a lot more context about what I'm about to talk to you about. So, not all the things got made. A lot of them did. So I will try them on. I'll pull little clips throughout the video to show you, you know, how they look on and kind of my thought process and how many of them worked out and how many of them didn't. I'll let you know now that we do not have a complete capsule wardrobe in the way that I intended. However, I still think it was a really thoughtful and interesting experience, so I'm going to chat with you about that too. So if you are still here and you want to hear about how my handmade capsule wardrobe turned out to be, here we go. Okay, I realize I should also mention, should there be some background noise happening? I feel like there's no escape. I'm surrounded by construction. This summer, they're digging up a couple of places and I think they're putting office buildings or high rises. Like, everything's closed and locked in and trying to be as soundproof as possible. We just gotta move on, live our lives, you know, noise or no noise. So, um, just if you hear stuff, I'll try to talk a little louder so we can all hear each other. All right, let's go. I want to start off with um, the item that I did not make as part of this, but I kind of cheated my way into putting it into the capsule. So it was like one item really ticked off. But I will say, this t-shirt, the tap of the T by tilling the buttons, actually let me move my chair. Tap of the T is, has been actually one of my most frequently worn items. And this kind of surprised me because there was a point in my life where I just like swore off t-shirts. I think, I don't know, I was like trying to go through this phase and the t-shirts weren't kind of part of the look. So I really didn't own any t-shirts. And I had made this and I was like, yeah, it's okay, I'll wear it. But it's so versatile. And with my life right now, I actually have been wearing this so often. This has been, like I said, one of my most worn items. I really enjoy it. Um, it is cropped compared to the OG pattern. The hems are unfinished because I couldn't be bothered figuring out how to hem knits and it was, I just wanted to move on with my life. And um, it was fine, nothing has ever unraveled. Um, it's just a great little shirt and I wear all the time. It is a organic, um, French cherry from Blackboard Fabrics, the fabric itself. So super stretchy. It's thick enough to be a winter t-shirt, but not too bad in the summer either. I think the fit of it overall is pretty good. I believe I made a size three. If I can look up all the details, I'll put it somewhere in the video for you all. But super versatile, 
great neckline, comfortable. Like I said, leather crop, sleeves are fine. My only slight issue if I was to be nitpicky about fit is that the shoulders are kind of wide for me. They overhang about an, uh, half an inch to an inch off my actual edge of my shoulders. But again, I'm petite, so that might be part of the deal. But tap of the T, already part of the capsule wardrobe. So one sheet, done. That was supposed to land on the couch. It didn't make it there. Um, let's talk about like an actual real project. So, if we count that as one top piece, the idea is to have two tops, one outer top or like a cardigan or a coat or a jacket or something, and then two bottoms. So this is another one of the tops. Now, it looks kind of finished, but if you look real close, it's been held up by um. Ah, so intense because I got most way through this and this is one of those projects where I was like it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine even though along the way it didn't quite feel fine and I was it was like some cost fallacy you know you already are part way through it and you really just want to push through and finish it that was me with this Ogden candy now it's not the fault of the sewing pattern it's a well-loved um, sewing pattern in the sewing community. I actually, I should have show you this the other way around. I believe this fabric is crepe back satin. The main problem with this project and not being actually finished and me just like saying this was not working out is my choice of fabric. This is the wrong choice of fabric um, for the pattern. This is inside out by the way. I want to show you this because I actually lengthened the inner lining. With the bust situation, the lining was actually here and it felt kind of awkward with me when I wear it. So I decided to lengthen it so it wouldn't sit weirdly across my bust. So this is just a lengthened inner lining. The pattern comes with the lining built in but like real short. I love the front and back V's but by the time I really got down to it, um, the rolled hem, the rolled hem in this great back satin got really thick. So the hem wasn't my favorite. It was kind of bulky. I was like, okay, I'm gonna work through it, push through. The straps turned out okay. They were a pain to turn over. Um, this was before I learned to get a special loop turner. I was like, I don't need one of those, it's fine. But the main issue in the very end was that this fabric just did not lay the way I wanted to over my body. Part of it I think is the fabric being too thick and this camisole meant to be kind of loose and flowy. It also wrinkles super bad. Like, can you see this? And there's no point in ironing this because as soon as I try to iron it, within, I don't know, like minute or two by just moving and existing existing um you would have wrinkled this again and i don't like this look so this is actually like 95 percent finished all i really need to do was secure the straps and i decided this was not going to work out i even finished the hems and everything and you know just this was not going to be a piece i was going to wear so i decided um this was a no-go so for some people, you know, you might get to this step and you think like it's fine, but I think personally, having sewn for a couple of years now, I have a certain personal standard to my outfits and, and my makes, and this just did not fit the vision in the end. So while the idea of it was lovely, like look at the shine in this crepe back satin, like I just, I love it. Um, it wasn't the right fabric fit for this project. Okay, I'm gonna try to... Toss it gently to the couch. Oh, better. Made it to the couch. All right, let's talk about... Um, oh, actually, do I have three toppers? No. Do I? I might have three. I might have three tops, you guys. I should have rewatched that initial video before I filmed this one because I actually think I have three tops. Three tops, one cardigan, two bottoms that was part of the original plan. If it, if it wasn't, then you've got a bonus item in the capsule wardrobe. So this is another top. Um, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is part of the original plan. You will have seen this. I showed it in another video. This is the simplicity licensed version of the Soho 7 toaster sweater or a variant of it. 
It is very similar to the So How 7 branded toaster sweater. This is just ever so slightly different in its details. It has a tall, what do you call these, funnel neck, okay? It has long sleeves. Um, I made the addition of the split ham, that's, that's me. That's not part of the pattern, but it wasn't hard to do. And um, it's more of a cropped shape on me. So this fabric, so my intention with this whole business is I, I want to use up this fabric. I think this is a thicker cotton interlock, so cotton micro or cotton spandex, whatever you want to call it. And it was great. It was cheap. It was in the clearance aisle. They have, no, they have a few colors every once in a while and it always comes back in. And it's a great stable knit to sew with. So sewing this is actually quite smooth and, and easy. Um, I don't know about this, you guys. Loads of them, loads of you, when I showed this to you the first time in another video, you love the funnel neck, okay? I don't know if I love the funnel neck. I don't mind a turtleneck to a particular extent, but the fact that this is kind of wide and stands up on its own, but also takes up space up here, it's kind of a not here nor there situation, and I, and I don't know if I love it. I also don't know if I love that this piece is one uninterrupted piece with no interest or detail. I think if you have a turtleneck, um, there's you know, some seaming here or some kind of detail to break it up. With being bigger busted, it just seems like one big colored blob and, and, I, and I don't know if I like that in practicality. Now, can I wear a necklace or a scarf or something and make it look a little better and break up the space? Sure I can. But on its own as a piece, I don't think this particular silhouette works for me and I, I'm not loving the final neck. So I may, I may try and refashion this into something that I would wear, but the fabric is great. I don't know about the color either. This is not a particular shade I wear often. I currently don't own anything in this color, but I've worn this once or twice around the house. It doesn't get as much wear as it probably should. My favorite part of it is actually the split hem. Um, but otherwise, I think it's so that fine. It was a really smooth make. It just didn't wow me in any particular way, one way or the other. But a version of the toaster sweater, but from the uh, big four brands, Simplicity. Another toss. Whoa! Oh, that was a uh, two out of three. Me down to the couch. Okay, let's talk about this. This is the Bertha Cardigan by Tilly and the Buttons. A very popular indie designer. Very popular cardigan as well. Now this is actually made in the exact same thicker cotton interlock as the sweater, crop sweater thing I just showed you. Um, for the most part, I think it turned out great. I did make some alterations. For example, I wanted to use the most of the fabric that I had instead of having like a little piece I probably wouldn't use for anything really. I extended the bottom band so it is super duper long because the band was really supposed to be like this much and I made it like double, triple that just to use most of the fabric. Now, if I hadn't done that and I made it in exactly the way it was intended, I felt like it would have sit, sat a little funny on my shape because I'm not that tall. And I think this is meant to be a cropped cardigan, but then on me, it was like sort of regular, but sort of long. It was just, it hit an awkward spot. So I think extending it was a smart choice. However, I feel like it's a bit tight across the back. Now that might be my choice of fabric. And this being um, quite a thick knit fabric, I do like that it has the back wing seams, the raglan essentially. I don't know how much you can see with the black fabric, I apologize. But I'll try to insert some clips here. So it's got two seam lines with the shoulder here. It's got a neckband. I did make a wider neckband than was um, intended in the pattern. I did put on a little patch because it felt kind of boring to me. And um, everything else was as is. I may have lengthened the cuff a little bit to make it a little longer. I don't hate this. I also don't know if I love it, but it's functional enough that I do wear it in particular weather. Um, if I were to make this again, which I probably will, like I said, I would 
try a fabric that has more stretch and recovery for the back because when I move like this, it feels a little constricted around my back and my shoulders even though this is the right size according to the size chart. So I might just be thoughtful from a fabric choice, but also shorten the sleeves. The sleeves are just too long. They get fussy and don't like them like that. Um, I don't know if, um, I might crop the body of it, but keep the longer extended hem. So instead of it ending like here, I would crop this part of the body but keep the longer hem. I think that might be a better silhouette for me. But overall, woo, this was a pretty satisfying make. Like I said, this fabric was really easy to sew with and I had no issues with it. So, don't know if I wear enough though. And I don't know if I would wear fashion so that I would wear enough. I gotta think about this. Take a look at the clips and uh, let me know what you think about this one. Oh, that was a good throw. Made it. Okay, here is my last item. Now, you may have gotten a feel of why a lot of those projects, the ones I talked to you about, I wasn't a huge fan of. Sometimes it's the pattern, but a lot of times it's also just the fabric choice. And I think pairing the right fabric with the right pattern is something that just takes a lot of experience and even experienced sewists don't always get it right sometimes you know you you have this vision or you really love this fabric and you think it would go well and on paper it probably would because of flow and drape and body and all of that but once you put it together it doesn't quite come together in a way that you expect it to and that, again, is what happened with this pair of pants. This is the Japanese sewing book um, that I will insert a clip of where they had a cropped wide leg pull-on pant. I was like, yes, this is my jam. This is almost finished, you guys. I worked so hard on this. I even put in the freaking belt loops. That's how much I worked on this. And there's like butt pockets in the back, you guys. I don't think this is the right for me and I'm gonna chop it up and refashion it. Um, which is actually the catalyst for this video because I wanted to show you this before I chopped it up to refashion. The fabric is amazing quality and I was like, working so hard to find just the right fabric with the right thickness, the right you know, weight, it was really durable. These are going to be like my wear it for everything pants. The fabric is amazing. It's thick, it's a thick contour, it's a beautiful dusty blue, it's all the things I love. It's wrong for this pair of pants. Look at how wide these legs are. Okay. In another fabric, a fabric with more drape and flow, no big deal. In this fabric, it just, it stuck out so wide. It had so much body that you're like just wide, really wide. Um, it wasn't as comfortable as I thought it would be in for this particular purpose. It's a lot of fabric to wear and it feels a little heavy, especially because it's loose. The elastic band is hanging on for dear life to try to keep it on your body because the rest of the fabric is so heavy, it's kind of pulling it down. I thought I was gonna make this pair of like indestructible pants, and I think the fabric is still pretty indestructible. It's just not right for this particular pattern. I really should have chosen something much softer, and I think that would have worked out way better. But I was already stuck in my ways, and until you got to the part where you tried it on, you don't really know. So this pair of pants, I could try it on for you. Hopefully, I put in some clips there. I'm actually super proud of. Um, and I like I finished everything so nicely on the inside, but it just it's not comfortable, and I wouldn't wear it, and I haven't actually worn it. And. Um, I'm hoping to refashion it into something else. I think the pieces are large enough, you know, like, hello, look at these legs. The pieces are large enough that I can refashion it into something reasonable and still use the pieces. Um, maybe a skirt of some kind, like a button front skirt. It needs to be something a bit more structured or a jacket, like a chore coat would be fabulous. 
but I think this is just too much fabric and too too much for this particular pair of pants and this is kind of disappointing because I was really looking forward to this pair of pants that was like super cool and I could pull it off but not in this variation it wasn't gonna happen now let's talk about the one thing that I didn't actually get to um, and that kind of concludes my attempt at a handmade capsule wardrobe and that actually is a wrap skirt from a book called No Pattern Needed. I still really like the idea of that and I may, I may at some point get back on it but that particular pattern or this particular pattern requires me to draft mathematically um, you know, kind of freehand on paper and after making all of these and having a lot of them not be perfect, if you will, I lost momentum. I lost momentum to draft that last skirt. If it was just like ready to go and I could cut and I could just sew it, I might have done it. But because all of this took so much time and that particular, the skirt would have taken extra time to draft it myself and then prep it and then cut it and then sew it, I just said no. <laughs> to be honest, I, I only get a chance to wear dresses and skirts in the summer when I'm on vacation. Um, otherwise, it's just too cold and non-functional here for me to wear skirts, as cute as that one may be. Um, I might get to it at some point, but it's not going to be part of this capsule. So when I look at the combination of things together, it's interesting that the simplest project, even though I didn't initially, you know, I didn't make it just for this capsule, the simplest project, the tap of the T, was my favorite out of the bunch in terms of results. And even though that is still not perfect, the fit is not perfect, it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. The simplest one was the one I end up wearing the most. So I wonder if that teacher says anything about sewing, like and ourselves, or, or maybe it's just me, that sometimes you know you you reach for the really fancy things and they could be fun to sew, but at the end of the day what you end up wearing and using are the super practical everyday things even though they're not that spicy so but tap with the tea had it all these years still wear it and i think my best make of the sponge but i want to hear what you think has been the best make of the bunch. Do you think some of these other projects should be salvaged in some way? Do you agree with my um, commentary on the patterns and the fit and the fabrics? How do you feel about it? I love to hear your opinions down below, whether you are a sewist, a maker, or just someone passing by. I'll chat with you down below in the comments and um, I might have a new project on the way. But I'll talk to you about that next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.